Let's see how NBT data works. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how NBT data works. And for that example, we're going to be modifying the smart blowtorch item class right here. So get your smart uh, blowtorch item classes out. This is going to be very interesting. Now, all of the code is available in the description below GitHub repository or individual gists because it's going to be, well, we're going to make the use on method a little longer. So it definitely will be more complicated than it is now, but no worries, we'll go through. The first thing that we need right here in the very beginning, basically, is the item stack. Now, the item stack is going to be the stack that was clicked with. We can get that by using pcontext.getItem in hand, and this returns the item stack. Now, similar to how the block and the block states are related, so is the item and the item stack related. Meaning that, of course, when I have a diamond sword, for example, right? That is item diamond sword. But if I have three diamond swords, they're all different item stacks. So that's sort of the idea. Once again, it goes into the, well, basically the same idea as the block and the block states, right? Where the block is a sort of a singleton, the item is also a singleton, and the item stacks are then the stacks that are in the inventory. And NBT data can be added to the, to an item stack. Uh, you can think of it as sort of like a hosted node on a particular item. If you have two different diamond swords, then they might have different values. So for example, the durability would also be considered an NBT tag is a different posted node than a different another that diamond sword has. That's sort of the general idea. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a charge to this smart blowtorch. When you have the blowtorch, it's going to have a charge associated with it. And if you click a right click a magma block, then it's going to increase that charge and if it has less than zero charge, then we're going to say, hey, you can't, the blowtorch doesn't have any charges left. So we're going to say, if block clicked equals the blocks.magma block, then we're going to do something. And first of all, we're going to say, hey, if pcontext.getHand is equal to interaction hand dot main hand, just in case that this isn't called, you know, twice or anything like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, if that is the case, then we want to make a compound tag. So this is the NBT tag, called tag equals new compound tag. So this is how we create a new tag. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, does this stack already have a tag? So has tag is the important method here. And then we're going to basically just increase this. So stack dot get tag. So we're going to get the tag and then I'm going to put an integer into it. So put int with the key charge. And then we're just going to put in uh, one for the time being. Actually, we want to put in one plus whatever we have in there. So the idea is if we want to increase this, we actually want to say stack dot get tag dot get int charge. So this might be a little confusing plus one. Why are we doing this, right? What is going on here? Well, hashtag returns true if this stack already has a tag associated with it. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fine. All is well. Now we can then put a particular integer in here. You can see saving this under a particular key and a particular value. So this is sort of a, a key value pairing. You can think of it as this. And this will then simply put the integer back into the actual key. If it doesn't have a tag, then we're actually going to make this the following way. We're actually going to say tag dot put int. And we're going to use the tag that we've created here because the because at that point, the actual uh, stack does not have a tag yet. And then we're going to say stack dot set tag with this tag. What is this? This might be a little bit confusing. Don't worry about it. We're going to go through this once more. So as tag is true, meaning that the stack already has a post-it node, so to speak, on it with the key charge. So that's already on there. And then we're simply going to say, okay, just increase it. Totally fine. If the post-it node is not available, this would be, this is false. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a post-it node, put charge one on there, and then we're going to put it onto the stack. So that's hopefully sort of understandable. And then we're immediately going to say interaction result not success, because then we're actually fine. And then we can be uh, certain that everything has worked. And then we're going to actually make an else statement here. And we're going to take everything that's inside of here and put it right in here. And then we're immediately going to add another if statement in here. So that's going to be if stack dot has tag. Okay. 
end. So this simply says once again, does it already have a tag? Does it already have a post node on it? And then stack dot get tag dot get int. And then once again, charge. And this one has to be bigger than zero. And then we want to continue. So making this the following way, actually. There you go. Copying this over again. Once again, of course, everything available to you in the description below, GitHub repository or individual gists. And then we have an else statement here where we're just going to output something once again to the console right here. So this is just going to be not cannot blow touch this block, but we're just going to say something like a blow torch doesn't have charge left. Something like that. So that's actually all that we need to do. And we of course also need to reduce the charge. But that is actually fairly straightforward as well. We can just after the you know, after this has been done, actually, let's do this before the breaking, that might lead otherwise to some issues. I'm going to say stack dot get tag, once again, right, so we're getting the tag, and then we're just going to do put int with the charge and then the actual stack um, stack dot get tag again, get in once again, with the charge here. And then we're going to say minus one. So here, we're just decreasing the charge, right? So we're going to actually make a method out of this, I'm actually going to make this um, manually, because it's going to be fine private void, which is the increase charge, right with for the item stack stack, so we need the stack. And then we can pretty much just control C, get this and then just yeah, basically keep this here and then just make the increase with the stack. And that's pretty much it. Then we can say the same thing. So we're just going to copy this over right here. And this is then the decrease stack where we then minus one this. And then instead of calling this crazy thing, we can just say decrease uh, charge with the stack. There you go. There it is. And that is all that we need to do. Now this, like I said, looks a little more complicated than it did before, of course. But we now have NBT data uh, right there. And what we're also going to do is we're also going to actually add this to our uh, hover text here. So this means that if shift has been, you know, holding down, then we actually also want to see the charge. So we're going to say p stack dot has tag. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the charge to the actual text itself as well. So we're going to say, this is actually then a let's make this a new uh, text component. And this is going to be charge. And then p stack dot get tag dot get int charge. And there you go. So now we should also be able to see the charge of this, you know, of the particular blowtorch when we hold down shift. That's actually pretty cool. Once again, everything available in the description below, GitHub repository or individual gists. And now let's see if it works. All right, we find ourselves in Minecraft. And as you can see, the charge actually already is on there. And when I right click a sand block, for example, blowtorch doesn't have charge left. And if I right click the magma block, you can see that the charge now is one. And now I can break one block and then charge is once again, not well, not charged up, right? So the charge is a zero again. And of course, I can now right click, I can spam, right click on this block, and the charge is just going to increase and now I can use it. But you can see that every time I actually break a block with this, the charge decreases as well. So there's, of course, a bunch of stuff that you can do, you can break the magma block, or you can have a chance to make them break the magma block. Or you could do I mean, you could do all sorts of stuff, basically with the blowtorch here in this case, and the NBT data. So that's, I, I, that's actually pretty cool. Right, and that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.